Here you can see the T1 curves for brain and for cerebrospinal fluid, CSF. Brain has a shorter longitudinal relaxation time than CSF. At the time zero, we have no longitudinal magnetization at all. And this can be the time immediately after our first 90 degree pulse. When we wait a long time before we repeat the 90 degree pulse, TR long, longitudinal magnetization has pretty much recovered. The longitudinal magnetic vectors that'll be tilted 90 degrees differ only to a small degree, so there will only be a small difference in signal intensity. In other words, tissue contrast between brain and CSF. If we, however, send in the second pulse after the shorter TR short, the difference in longitudinal magnetization is rather large, so there will be a better tissue contrast. And as we can see from the distance between the two curves, there is a time span where tissue contrast is most pronounced. Looking at the two curves, you may have asked yourself, why are the signals after a very long time TR between pulses not identical? We have heard the explanation already. The signal intensity depends on many parameters. When we wait a long time, T1 does not influence the tissue contrast anymore. However, there may still be a possible difference in the proton density of the tissues in question. And when we wait a very long time, TR, in our experiment, the difference in signal is mainly due to different proton densities. We have a so-called proton density or spin density weighted image. Now we have heard about T1 and proton density weighted images. How do we obtain a T2 weighted image? This is a little more difficult to understand.